Hi there, I'm Mads and I'm going to show you how to make a specific graph using RStudio. So first things first, make sure you have RStudio open. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is click up here in the top left corner, um, click the um, R script, and then this will open a new R script window for us to type our commands into. Um, so first, if you have not already downloaded ggplot2, you're going to need to do that. So the way you'll do that is you'll um, type in install, nope, install, and then ggplot2. So you'll type in install.packages ggplot2, and then you'll run that code. So the way that you run code is that you press control enter when you're on the line that you want to run. Um, once you press control enter, it'll run that line for you. Okay, so I've already installed ggplot2, so I'm not going to do that again. Um, but I do need to do, um, I need to type in library and then ggplot2 um, and run that code. Um, and that will um, open ggplot2 onto this current R Studio session that I'm running right now. Um, so ggplot2 is essentially. It's just a package that's full of um, different functions and different data sets and things that are really useful for creating graphs. So um, next thing we need to do is um, we're going to, you should have a um, data set on Excel that you um, have already like downloaded. It should be a um, face recognition. Um, Data set, so we're going to let's look here. It's like 205. So here I have this um, face data big web data set seven. So that one you're going to want to open this and then save it as a um, a CSV file. So you need to go ahead and do that before we continue. So if you've already downloaded that data set as a CSV file, um, we're going to we want to save that um that data set as data one so um, we're going to type in data one and then a um a less than sign and then a dash um and so this is this is basically a command to, sh to um tell our computer to save the following um code as data one so we're gonna um do this and then we're gonna type in um read dot csv um, and then file dot choose. So you can um, you can either tell your computer exactly where the file is, or you can ask the computer to let you choose on a on a menu, and that's typically a lot easier. So we're going to do file dot choose, and then open and close parentheses, um, comma header equals true. So that just tells. Um, our studio that the first line should be used as a header. Okay, so then we're going to press Control Enter and run that. Um, oh, I misspelled this. So file with an e. <laughs> dot choose. Okay, so we're going to run this, um, and we will th that will save. Um, sorry, really quick. So um, when you do file dot choose, it'll have this um, window pop up and ask you to choose which file you want to open. So we're going to do this one where it says Microsoft Excel um, comma se separated values. That's the CSV file. So we're going to open this one. Um, okay, so now it knows what data one is. Okay, cool. So then um, if we want to see what data one looks like, we can just type in data one and then run that line um, and it'll give us like a, a small preview of the data that we have in that um, file. Okay, so next, um, if we want to plot this um, data set, we're going to type in qplot, which just stands for quick plot. And then in parentheses, we're going to put um, some, so we're going to put two, two variables on the um, the first variable will be on the um, x-axis and the second will be on the y-axis. So I want to put the um, Cambridge face, um, 
the Cambridge, Cambridge face memory task on the um, X axis. So where I'm going to type in CFMT, which is um, just, that's what um, it's, sorry, that's the label that we've used in um, data one to, um, for those um, test results. So we're going to just type in CFMT um, first, and then second, we're going to type in FFMT, which is just another um, memory um, test. And then, um, so we have these two, we have these two variables, but um, our studio won't know where to find those variables. So then we have to tell it where the data should be. So the data is going to be in data one. And since we have a object that's labeled data one, it'll know where to find those two variables. <clears throat> okay, so let's run this this line of code and it'll show us this um, this graph here. So this is this is a very large graph and it's kind of hard to tell um, exactly what the correlation is between these two things. And we don't have anything that tells us like, we only have two variables, CFMT and FFMT. But if we want to like add different variables, we'll have to do something else because this graph won't show us all of like different things. So let's say um, we want to add in the variable of age. One way we could do that is we can go back and edit this line of code that we just typed in. So um, we can add another um, argument. So we can add, um, something that says color equals age. So we can just type in color um, and then equal sign age. And if we run that, then we see that um, the age of the person is um, coded by the shade of blue um, that shows up on the graph. So, um, that's a, that's a good way to get three variables in our studio um, so that you, you know, can show more than just three variables. Uh, or, sorry, you can show more than two variables by using color or shape or um, size, different things like that. Okay, so if we have color um, that's coded by age, let's say we want to um, make this so all of these dots are like perfectly lined up and that sort of suggests that um, the values were rounded when R was creating this graph. So if we want to change that um, and sort of um, make the graph appear more like natural as if someone had actually like graphed it and not rounded or anything like that, we would do geom, which is just the like type of graph. Um, so geom equals um jitter so we're gonna in quotes jitter and that will just sort of um add a little bit of random noise to our values and you might think that that would like make the graph less accurate but um it, so you can't look at individual values and know if those are true or not but that does um sort of make the graph um, appear more natural and um, it gives you a better idea of the global um, correlation. So we're going to do geom equals jitter um, and then run that line and we'll see that appears more like an actual graph rather than just like dots lined up next to each other. Okay so now that we've done that what if we want to add what if we want to like change the you know shape or size of um, our of our dots. So one way we can do that is we can add more arguments. So let's say I want to make the these points here five times bigger than they are. So I could type in size equals and then we um, will type in I just for that stands for as is I five. So um, R will read this as we want the size of these points to be five of what they are like at default. And this is just as is, so just as is five. Okay. We'll run this line of code and see what happens. Okay, so now we, these are much bigger. Um, 
and you can, you know, sort of see more overlap between points and things like that. And let's say we want to make um, some of these points, or we want to make the points transparent so we can see how many are stacked up on top of each other. So if we want to do that, we will um, add another argument. So we'll put comma alpha equals, and then um, I for as is again. And then in parentheses, we'll put 0 0.2. So that'll make it 0 0.2 times as um, transparent as it was initially. So let's do that, and then we'll run this code. And so now we see these are a lot more transparent, so we can see where there's a lot of data points clustered up and where there's only a few. Um, okay, so I want to set this, so I don't have to type this in every time if I want to, like, adjust something. I'm going to set this equal to um, core. So let's type in core, and then we'll do the lesson sign and a dash again, and then run that. And we'll see core shows up here and it um, has all of these settings already on it. So if I just want to type in core, this graph will show up again. So um, I want to add some things to core um, just to, you know, change some settings about um, my graph. So if I want to do that, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, um, Add something so you put the plus sign and then um, I want to facet my grid so that just means I want to break things into groups so that there's two graphs for um, different variables so let's say if I want to break them into groups for English I'll have one graph for English and another or one graph for people who speak English and another graph for people who don't speak English um, just to see if there's like a core if the correlation is different for people who do or don't speak English um, so we'll type in core plus, and then we're going to do facet underscore grid. And then in parentheses, um, you'll put a period just to tell, this is um, to tell our studio what um, variable you want to facet the, the graph by. So you'll put period and then this um, squiggly line thing, um, and then we're going to type uh, English. So this will just tell our graph to, uh, excuse me, to um, facet our grid up by English. So if we run that, we'll get something that looks like this. So um, zero would be people who don't speak English and one would be people who do speak English. So now we just have two graphs. So this is um, a way to show four different variables. So we have FFMT scores, CFMT, um, sorry, yeah, CFMT scores, our age by color, and as well, um, we also have um, English up here. So um, we added English. Now, I maybe we don't like the gray because the gray and the blue sort of, um, th there's not a, like a lot of, um, contrast between them. So let's say we want to make this, um, th we want to make the graph um, appear more like black and white instead of gray. So if we want to do that, we can um, add, so you'll type the plus sign, um, and then you'll do theme underscore um, BW, which is black, white, and then just open and close parentheses. And if you run that, we'll see that our graph shows up in black and white rather than gray. And so there's more contrast between our background and our points. Okay, awesome. So let's say we want to add a title to our graph. Um, we're going to do another plus sign, and we'll type in GG title. And then in parentheses, we're going to type in the, what we want to um, name our graph. So we'll do parentheses and then quotation marks and then, so let's say we want to name our graph um, face recognition um, age and English. Okay, so then if we run this code, it'll add a title. 
And then I think we have a pretty 